follow my message. I'll make it short, hopefully. Uh, called to make a difference is my title. Called to make a difference. Uh, Ephesians 4, 1 to 6. As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy as a prisoner. And I believe that he spoke a bit more stronger and bigger. Not only was he a prisoner physically, that imprisoned him many, many times, but being in a, a prisoner to the servanthood for God. I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Now, maybe some of us have, have not noticed that, but there's a calling that you've received. And what are you doing about it? <clears throat> there's a calling that you've received. It's been handed to you. And so are you, are you molding that? Are you shaping that? Uh, are you developing that calling in your life as a musician, as a, as a songwriter, as a preacher, as a teacher, uh, as a prophet, as a prophetess, um, as an administrator? The calling that you receive, are you developing that skill in your life uh, it, within the Word of God, number one? Are you developing your, your leadership qualities, your ability to serve, your ability to speak, uh, your ability to read out loud in front of people, whatever it is, your calling? As a wife, I believe the wife's first and foremost ministry is to her husband and to her children. First and foremost. First and foremost ministry for a husband is to his wife and to his children. Others, other things develop from that. Um, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body, and we already spoke about this this morning at communion. There is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. Yes, you were called. Well, you may not know that, but you've been called. You've been marked. The fact that you are here, God's called you. God's marked you. There's a calling on your life. Hallelujah. And so let's strive to, to find that place where we fit. Make every effort, Paul's saying, to keep the unity of the Spirit. Verse 4, there is one body, one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all in you all. Let's just stand for a moment. Let's pray. Can we stand? Let's just arise. Lift your hands. Let's just commit our time to God and, and let's just let, let him speak to you. Holy Spirit, we just come to you in this time. and Lord, we just want you to speak to us, even in regard to our calling, even in regard to where we fit in life, where we fit in church, where we fit in ministry. Holy Spirit, today the People in this room are not satisfied. People in this room may uh, be just existing in life, just not complete within themselves. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you would touch them, touch us, touch me today, that we would arise to our calling, that we would step up to what you've called us to. Holy Spirit, bless your word today. As the word goes forth, let it be from your throne room. And God's people said, amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Romans 12 3 for by grace given me I say to every one of you do not think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think but rather think of yourselves with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you Philip can you close this uh, air conditioning unit please in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each and every one of you. It's been distributed to you. Turn to someone and say, it's been distributed to you. It's been distributed. It's already been distributed to you. See, the gift of the measure of faith has been, been given to you already. It's been distributed. It's been handed out. Now, that can stay dormant in your life forever, or you could rise up. You can be dormant. 
it, it, could, it could be stagnant in your life. It could be suppressed. It can be a, a light under a table. It can be diminished to a little flicker rather than a burning flame. How many want a burning flame? I want a burning flame in my life. Man, I'm so passionate for the burning flame. Desire the flame. Desire to be on fire for God. I don't know how, how strong you are as a Christian. I don't know where you stand in God. You know, you, you yourself know how, how strong you are, how mature you are, how deep in the Word you are. You, you yourself know. And so strive for the flame. Strive to burn for God. You know, strive to submit. Strive to obey. Strive to be involved. Strive to put your shoulder to the work. One body, one spirit, one unity, one love. It's all God. It's all God. As talented as we may be, as gift. I, 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 you know, I was just thinking about and preparing for the sermon. And I was thinking about the people in this church and the potential, Pastor Rob, the potential in this church. I mean, the potential in this church of the men and the women in this church. But don't say that you cannot do anything for God. The world is sick and needs Jesus. And you have the answer. You have the answer in the palm of your hands. You know, you, you have the answer to touch the world, touch people's lives. I don't care if you know one scripture or 50,000 scriptures. God will use what you have. God will use your good looks. God will use whatever. Hallelujah. God will use your money. Yes. God will use your talents, yes, your abilities, yes, whatever they are, whatever they are, your small ability, your little self, your of whatever you think you are, God will say, oh yeah, come and I'll show you what I can do with that, come, you know, and we, we gather a wealth of material, and we sit in meetings after meetings and we get so puffed up full of the word of God, and you have so much to give, you could tell them the last story you went through. Tell your neighbors what Jesus has done for you. If people would know the love in this church, of what we, what we possess, of the presence of God in this place, this place would be packed and too small. Too small. Where are we up to? Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. All have been given a measure of faith by God. And this faith, I believe, is not just for survival, like just to exist. Just, this faith goes beyond that. The measure of faith God has given to you is, 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 is more important than just to survive. It's to accomplish what he's called you to, to do in this earth. You've been called by God to accomplish something in this earth. Find what that is. Jump in that thing. Jump in that river and find it. Search God out. Don't be dormant. Hallelujah. All are important functioning members in the body of Christ. We all play different roles. Verse 4, for just as each of us has one body, many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Do you feel like, do you feel like you belong here to each and every one else, or are we all strangers? Some of us are. Some of you, I don't even know your name. Should it be like that? I don't think so. It shouldn't be like that. All members belonging to each other, under one spirit, under one body, governed by one God. Verse 6, we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. According to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesied, then prophesy in accordance with your, with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. 
if it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it with diligence. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Gifts, calling, very important in one's life. It brings fulfillment. It fills the void. Be faithful in your calling. 1 Corinthians 12, you can read it when you go home, but let's kick it off. There are different kinds of gifts. But the same Spirit distributes them. Same Spirit, one Spirit, one Father, one God. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working. But in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. And of course, we read on and we read on. Nine gifts of the Spirit. First Peter 4.10, go to the next one. Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others. It's not for you. It's to serve others. God's blessed you to bless others. God's given you the gift to transfer. It's to flow through you to others. It's not to hold up for yourself, store it up, keep to yourself, be self-centered. A lot of the time we're like that. Self-centered, selfish, we keep it to ourselves, me, 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 my, yeah, it's for others. Let's reach out, let's show love, let's show Christ. Let's not harbor stuff in our, in our hearts against each other. Let's be open, let's work it out, let's enjoy God's presence in our lives. Let's, uh, I, I tell you, if you're, not, if you're not involved, if you're not searching for that calling, if you're not using what God has called you to use, man, you, you're going to pick the meat out of my teeth. You, you're not going to like the color of my hair, the shirt I wear. You, you're going you're to be in, involved in stuff that shouldn't be there. Get involved. Put your heart to it. I can pull out people in the Bible that were involved in ministry but had their eyes on other things. One of them was the Tekoites while Nehemiah was building the walls. He said, but the Tekoites did not put their shoulder to the work. They became a problem for the work. Who was Elijah's servant that chased the money? And yet he saw the miracles and was involved in Elijah's ministry. Hmm? Do you know his name? Gehazi? Gehazan. You see, I can go on and on. With people... Yes, they were part of, if you want, church life or ministry, but never kept the flame alight. You could be a part of church life but be in the flesh, or you could be a part of church life and be in the spirit. One will kill you, one will give you life. Anybody with me today, or did you eat too much pasta the night before? Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others faithfully, administering God's grace in its various forms. You're not going to have the same gift as me. You, you have, everyone's different. But enter that, you find that thing, develop it, seek God, enter that ministry, whatever God's called you to. I believe God has called you more than just come to Christ and enter a seat, keep it warm on Sunday morning for an hour. I believe there's more to your life than that. How many know that you can come to church sad and depressed and leave sad and depressed? How many know that that can happen? It can happen. Or you can come in here absolutely down and leave on fire, excited, built up in the faith. This is important that we get together. Hmm? This is so important as we pray together and worship together as a church. One body, one faith, one Lord. And not only that, have you prayed for Pastor Robert and for his wife this week? Did you offer to wash his car this week? Polish his shoes? You may not know it or may not like it, but the destiny of the success of your life and ministry lies in the vision of that man there. You may not know it and you may not like it. Your, the success of your life lies in the vision of this man here, if you're a part of this church. Elisha, Elijah, Joshua, Moses. 
And so how important it is, the more that you pray for these guys, the more that you'll be blessed. How many want to be blessed? Pray for them. When was the last time you gave them $10? And you want to be blessed? Okay. We're not going there. Right. Praise God. One God, one Lord, one Savior, one church, one spirit. Given it shall be given. Be a blesser. Be a giver. Gift comes from God. Gift out. Money. Flow, river, flow. If you hold it back, what happens to a river? It doesn't move, Masood. It starts to smell. It smells. Fish die. But if your river flows, hmm, stream stays clean. Fresh water flows. Animals live. Trees grow. Bacteria is removed. Don't stay stagnant. I'm talking a whole lot in this room and some of the stuff some people are relating to. I'm giving you some answers. I'm putting stuff in your hand that you can work with, um, that you can take with you, have a blessed life. If I speak with tongues of men and angels but do not have love, I'm nothing. God forbid that we would come up here and speak the way we speak if we didn't have love for his people, if we didn't have love for his church, if we didn't have love for humanity. Romans 12, 9, can't get through it all. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. This love thing comes up often. Honor one another above yourselves. There we go. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge. Two more verses to go. My dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is my vengeance. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. I don't want to feed my enemy. I want to kill my enemy. Feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on your head, on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Friends, the potential in you, the potential in you of a volume of wealth of God's presence in your life. Let's stand, close your eyes for a moment. The potential in you. Of what God can do in you and through you by saying, Yes, Lord, use me. We're just going to close it off with a word of prayer in just a few minutes, but I know that God's word's challenging. It's a challenging word, it comes with the arms of love, and it's, it, it produces life within us God's word, God's seed of the word. Don't, don't stay in the same place. Don't say God can't use me. Don't say I'm a nobody. Don't say I have no value. Don't say I'm not gifted. God's called you with a calling. 2 Timothy 2.15, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed. Present yourselves. Do your best. Lift your hands with me, can you? Father, today we thank you for your word. 
Lord, we bring this this, uh, service to a close. But Holy Spirit, we pray that your word today would go forth in power. And Lord, touching people's lives. Lord, producing much fruit in days to come, weeks to come, months to come. Lord, we thank you that your word convinces us. It convicts us. It's a challenging word. And Lord, that we would leave this place knowing that we have been called. Lord, the devil is a liar. We're not going to listen to the voices that come to us daily. We're going to listen to the voice that's in your word to us, that we have been called. You've given us gifts and anointing, and there is a volume of wealth, of material already in us to help and bless others. And Father, forgive us for our mistakes. Help us to serve you with all our heart. Help us to put you first. Help us to look to you in faith. Help, help us, Lord, to be responsible, to be responsive. Oh, God, we pray in Jesus' name that your gifts would begin to flow through us. Lord, that, that the anointing of the Holy Ghost and fire from heaven as a challenge, as, as a challenge, as a, as a bridge, Lord, that we would, Lord, touch people's lives. Lord, that those that we come in contact with in our workplace, Lord, in our homes and families, Father, Lord, in the street, oh God, that we would have an effect upon people's lives because of the light that shines in us. God, I thank you this day for your goodness in our lives. We thank you for your presence in this church. Thank you for a church on fire. Thank you for a people on fire. Thank you for servants in this house. Who, who are going to commit and devote their lives to the ministry and devote their heart to God and find their calling. Father, I thank you for people that are set on fire with a zeal, Lord, to pursue their ministry, to pursue God with all of their heart, soul, and spirit. We commit our lives to you. And God's people said, God bless you, people. Let's give the Lord a great big clap. Come on. Amen. God bless you. God bless you.